it's good to see you. So starting with that encouraging news out from Jay and Jay, I guess, what's your take on the data that we got today? I think it's very good. Uh, I think uh, all the vaccines, the message RNA, as well as the Johnson Johnson, are going to uh, be very helpful with, with boosters. I personally think probably the eight-month uh, uh, timetable after the last shot you've had is going to be the sweet spot in getting the booster. We know now so that uh, some of the uh, patients who are immunocompromised uh, need it sooner. When we hear these stories about um, the people in the hospital, the majority of whom in the hospital, uh, unfortunately not vaccinated, there are the cases of people who are breakthrough cases. And then there was an individual on television on a different network talking about uh, having a breakthrough case and really difficult symptoms. Do we know the severity of what happens if you are vaccinated, but you still get this variant? Yes, we do. Uh Right now, our, our hospitals are overwhelmed in Montgomery, Alabama, and all across the, the state. We have no ICU beds. 95% of the patients in the hospital are unvaccinated. Of the five or so percent that uh, have been vaccinated, most of them have uh, are immunocompromised, either chronic renal disease or something like that. Uh, extreme obesity is a huge factor of not doing well, even if you're vaccinated. Doctor, what are you seeing on the pediatric level? Because I was just reading today, there's a record number of children in hospitals right now nationwide. And I know you're seeing a lot done in your state of Alabama, too, that are becoming a little bit more sick than they were uh, in previous months with the Delta variant. Can you talk about just how big of a risk this variant is to children? Sure. Now, I'm not a pediatrician. Let me start with that. But uh, this time last year, 1% of the cases, new cases of COVID were children. Now it's up to about 23, 24%. A lot of kids are getting uh, infected and a lot more are going to get infected as we go back to school. Most children do very well. Oh, you know, a great majority do very well. But having said that, uh, as a few days ago at UAB, which is our big uh, university hospital and the, and the children's hospital, which is associated with them, had about almost a dozen uh, uh, children uh, on ventilators. So it's a real problem. Um, you know, you're a pulmonologist. You understand the issues better than anybody. I want to back up very quickly because you are right now in the center of the storm where the medical staffs of places like New York were a year ago. How are you and your team holding up? Well, I'll be honest with you, it's very emotionally and uh, physically draining. It's really tough for our, our nurses. Uh, I've been working in the ICU for 38 years. I've always known all my ICU nurses. I go into the units now, and I don't know a single soul because the, my nurses are sick, they're home quarantined, or they're ill with the COVID, and I'm seeing traveling nurses. And they're, it's exhausting. We didn't think we was going to do this again this winter. And, Doctor, this has also pulled into question the timing of all this and what needs to be done in order to get COVID under control. Dr. Fauci was out saying that it might not be until springtime of 2022, but there's still a lot riding on that because a lot of that has to do with the number of people who do get vaccinated. What do you think of the timeline? And I guess what more can be done to reach those? Because there's a large number of people in your state of Alabama who are refusing to get vaccinated. That's exactly right. And, and a lot of those are young people. Most of the older people are vaccinated. Now, that's changing right now because everybody in the hospital primarily are young people. I've got uh, several 20s, 30s, and a few 40-year-olds on ventilators, critically ill. So the vaccination rate is going up slowly. There's a lot of misinformation out uh, on the vaccines. And you got uh, some doctors who are discouraging vaccinations. That's a shame. Uh, I, I'm not sure when this thing is going to end. But one thing we could do to solve the problem right Right now is using the monoclonal antibodies, which I know y'all have been talking about. That's the that's the golden goose right now that's going to keep people going to the hospital. Um, I, I can't help but notice that you have around uh, your neck and then in front of you uh, what I would imagine is a pretty good mask. What would you say? I wish I had one of those. That just would be great for Halloween when we are post this pandemic. But <laughs> yeah. what would you... What would you say? Um, I'm thinking of Darth Vader right now, but what would you and you're certainly not. We are grateful to the work you're doing. Um, what would you say to the governors of states where they've politicized the mask issue? 
You know, it, it's a shame. Mask has not hurt anybody. Uh, they clearly help. I mean, how much flu did you see last year? None. You know, masks work, and it's not a big deal. Uh, you know, it, it's a shame it's become such a political issue. Uh, and it, it, that's all I can say. Uh, we're not going to have a mask mandate in Alabama, and most southern states are not. You know, we're kind of don't want the government to tell us what to do. But having said that, nobody has a problem wearing a seatbelt and, you know, not walking in a restaurant without shoes. Doctor, we have the news today. Moderna completing its submission for full FDA approval of its vaccine. Pfizer getting full approval earlier this week. This has led to a number of companies mandating vaccines. Is there any reason employers shouldn't be mandating vaccines at this point? Well, you know, that's another political hot, hot potato there. Uh, I wish everyone was mandated to have the vaccine. Uh, you know, it's it's a political problem, particularly in, uh, uh, in in the deep south. We're conservative people. I'm a conservative person. I don't want the government telling me what to do, but this is one for the common good. You know, it's interesting because you brought up the issue that seems to be at the center of politics. We hear on different TV interviews, people say, I just don't trust it. I just don't trust it. But your seatbelt analogy, I mean, not you don't want to be insulting to people who are are concerned, but these vaccines have been in development for two decades, right? I mean, mRNA is not new technology. That's exactly right. People said, "Well, I don't want to use it. It was developed too soon." No, we've been working on this thing, like you said, almost two decades, and uh, uh, we've had the, the the formula, if you will, uh, ready when the uh, we got the DNA sequence from the Chinese, and I think like January the eighteenth. In two days, we knew what to do. The whole uh, uh, nine months before it was approved was simply testing. We had the quote formula, if you will, uh, early on, but it's been a two decade. Uh, journey. And this technology is going to be uh, game changing for a lot of things, including cancer in the, in the future.